Hi everyone, welcome to Flinders University's College of Education, Psychology and Social Work. I'd like to first start by acknowledging that we record to you from Ghana land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Ali Enright. I am the coordinator of first year psychology. So within our College of Education, Psychology and Social Work, we obviously have three distinct disciplines and I come from psychology. I'm usually teaching at first year. However, I also coordinate into our fourth year and teach across second and third year. So if you're in psychology, there's a good chance that we're going to get to meet and I really look forward to that. If you're not in psychology, it means that you're in education and social work. And I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce you to some names um, of some leadership people who are in those disciplines. So in our college, we have leadership teams, right? These are people that help to inform the study pathways, your experiences within your topics, make systematic changes. They really care about your success and about your experience while you're here within our college. For um, psychology, we have a teaching program director, or a TPD, and for us that's Glenn Bodner. However, in education and social work, we use the term course coordinators, and so for social work, we have a course coordinator for the undergraduate suite of topics, and that's Renee Summers, and then we have a course coordinator for the master's or postgraduate, and that's Louise Butler. After that, we have education course coordinators, and there are distinct course coordinators for all the different areas in education. So we've got Rachel for early childhood education, Trudy for primary education, Carol for special education, inclusive education, Choi for secondary education, Deb for sport, health and physical activity, and then Morella for continuing professional education. I'm sure that I can speak on their behalf in welcoming you to our college and also reaching out a hand of uh, an invitation to approach or invite your suggestions or um, interactions across any of your experiences while you're here. So the whole point of this welcome uh, lecture is to kind of get you starting to think about the key things that you need to be successful while you're here at university. So we're going to cover some of the nitty gritty stuff like enrollment and getting your student ID. But along the way, I want you to also be thinking about what are some of the goals that I have while I'm here? How, are, uh, how do I plan to achieve some of those goals? And think about how these resources that I walk you through just here in this video might help you to be successful in achieving those goals, or at least in overcoming some of the barriers that you might find along the way. So first up, we need to get a student ID. Um, you can order your student ID uh, via Okta. So if you're not familiar with Okta, however you accessed Flow, chances are it was probably from Okta. If you jump on to flinders.edu.au, um, and then on the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little portal that says Students. You click on Students, and that's actually a website that was created in partnership with students. Um, and so it's all for students about what students think that is most useful and helpful for them to have on a website. In there you'll actually see pretty early on a link for Okta. And Okta is essentially like a housing that houses all these apps that are really useful for you. One of them is Flow, where you are able to navigate to finding your way at Flinders and this video as a consequence. Every single topic here at uni has a Flow site. Something else that you can do um, on Okta is order my ID card. So this is a really useful thing. Um, when I ask students in face-to-face uh, -face why they find the student ID card might be useful, um, pretty straight up, usually students are like, discounts, yeah. So a lot of the times you can get good student discounts with your student ID, so definitely worthwhile there. Um, other sort of immediately useful ways on campus to use your student ID is at the library. So you need to have your student ID to um, loan things out from the library like your textbook or other books that you might find useful. And just as a, an FYI, um, I remember when I first started in my undergrad and thought that our libraries here on campus were really just um, restricted to uh, books for different uh, degree pathways. And um, But the library actually has awesome books just for novels, for reading for yourself, or things that, you know, might be totally unrelated to your content necessarily or your degree pathway, um, but it's a really good, um, useful place to go to, not just for borrowing books that are related to your topic. Um, you can borrow books that are things that you just find interesting, um, so they do have, you know, fiction. Um, but then also, uh, while we're on the, the idea of the library, 
beautiful place to go and study. We have gorgeous cubicles along the windows at our main campus library. And um, you can look over the ocean while you study um, with great PowerPoints, good internet access. Um, I did a lot of my study sort of sitting by cubicles there. So a really useful resource. Um, the other thing that's really great about the library is we have the level two in the library, which is the commons where you can go to get support, academic support all the time. You can book in, they can do it online, you can do it face to face. Um, student services or student learning support services um, via the Commons accessible in level two. Um, there's lots of other really good things about the library too like printing things off and you, you need your student ID card to print off documents at the library so another really useful uh, reason to have your student ID. So um, grab your student ID, useful for lots of different things. Okay, car parking, um, possibly my nemesis on campus. I think I've been hit with that many tickets um, across the years. Anyhow, look, parking, um, it's, it's entirely up to you and your schedule. We do have what's called V permits, so you can purchase parking that lasts you for a semester or for the entirety of the year. So um, jump on to um, flinders.edu.au slash parking and see if there's a pass maybe that fits for you. Otherwise, we have um, an app that you can download um, while you're on campus. So if you just want to pay kind of day by day, you can do so by downloading um, the Flinders Parking app and then you um, just put in your car details. Um, it's really great. It finds where you're parked. So you just rock up on campus, um, go into a parking uh, lot and open up the app and you can start your timing there and you can pay via the app. Um, make sure you do though because we have very, very good parking um, uh, officers who will come and give you a ticket otherwise. Okay, campus connectors, what we talk about here, mostly about the loop bus. One of the things that's wicked about Flinders is that all of our uh, campus is isolated to sort of one area, gorgeous area. Um, like I mentioned already, look, overlooking the ocean in a lot of ways, we've got gorgeous um, trees and and so, but we're, we're quite spread out. Um, so we've got sort of the main campus um, where we've got the student hub, um, where you can find all of your, you know, the chemist, post office, um, good food, um, and connect, Flinders Connect, which I think is really important. Uh, not something that we have a slide for in this welcome series, but um, Flinders Connect is like your one-stop shop. If you've got anything that you need, um, you can go in there, basically go to a kiosk, briefly explain on the kiosk what uh, you're there for, whether it's enrollment, whether it's paying student amenity fees, etc. Um, it'll spit out a little ticket and then your ticket will be called to another kiosk and you can go and interact with someone face to face and they can help you with whatever you need. Um, so Flinders Connect, really worthwhile place to go to. I kind of view it as like our, our one-stop shop or our, our kind of like our center link on campus, if you will. But anyhow, one of the, one of the other uh, aspects to having a campus that's all sort of in one area but spread out is that sometimes um, it can be quite lengthy walks from one side of campus to the other, um, and sometimes those can be uphill or downhill. Um, and so as such, Flinders has a fantastic loop bus um, that connects our campuses. So these uh, run daily, uh, frequently as well. There's usually really decent signage as to where you can catch the loop buses, um, but they connect us from the Bedford Park campus to Sturt to the Flinders Medical Center, as well as Tonsley. So worth checking out the loop bus, um, particularly if you're coming, you know, sort of walking maybe from the train um, down to Flinders Medical, you can jump on the loop bus and take you up to education um, or the main campus. When you get onto campus, and this is true actually not just for Flinders, but once you're a student, you can access this network called EduRoam um, pretty much globally across all university campuses. So now that you're a student at Flinders University, if you happen to be in the city and you're near Adelaide Uni, you can actually log into Adelaide Uni's uh, EduRoam. Or um, when, the, when we're traveling and you may be overseas, uh, maybe you're at Harvard or somewhere else's campus and you can can uh, jump onto their edu room as well. So it's a uh, pretty much a global uh, Wi-Fi service for university students. Um, and you type in your username, which is your fan. Um, so usually it's the first four letters of your last name, uh, coupled with some numbers, and then your university password. So um, your username, your fan, and your uni password are something that you're going to be using really frequently throughout your time as a student. So um, best to just try and commit it to memory because it's something that you'll be constantly recalling.
Okay, if you haven't done so already, it's a really good idea to enroll in your topics. Um, sometimes, uh, don't panic if you haven't, there's still time. And in fact, sometimes you enroll in topics um, that are electives. So there's a, a difference between uh, core and elective topics. Core topics are the ones that your degree says you have to take in order to get that degree. So in psychology, for first year students, we have Psych 1A or 1101 and Psych 1B, 1102, and Psych 1106, which is research methods. Those are our core, you have to take them, topics in first year. Um, but after the core topics, you also have what's called electives, and electives are really cool opportunities to explore other areas. And some people are really strategic in choosing electives that are um, all building towards a particular um, expertise or interest that they might have. Um, I myself, when I did my undergrad, just took uh, electives that I thought sounded really interesting at the time. Um, my heart was always sort of in psychology and uh, teaching, um, and so I didn't necessarily uh, take other electives that were directly related to that um, but I took other topics that I just wanted to explore with and have fun um, some of the best advice I think we can give our, our new students or undergraduate students is to pay attention to the shiny things out of the corner of your eyes so if there's an elective that's kind of catching your attention go for it um, so sometimes when you enroll in an elective, um, you get into maybe the first two weeks and you're like, oh boy, this isn't really for me. This is not really what I thought it was going to be. So don't panic. You can withdraw. You can swap. You can change over. Um, so if you're unsure, go to uh, student.flinders.edu.au uh, and search for enrollment. Um, if you're ever feeling stuck or lost, you can always send an email to askflinders.edu.au with your enrollment uh, queries and they can give you a hand. Every topic um, typically has some set of required readings or materials. And so some use textbooks, some use books that they've put together. So some actually create uh, resource books. Um, so it's really important that when you get onto your topic flow sites, check out the required readings. That's in the topic information and resources module. So modules are those squares that you see on the flow site, um, not all flow topics will use modules. So some will use like a, a weekly kind of list of what you need to do each week. Um, a lot of them though use sort of squares, what we call modules. And in the College of Education, Psychology and Social Work, all of our topics are required to have three of the same consistent three modules. So topic information and resources, the communication hub and the assessment hub. And that's just so that we can make it really clear to students where they can find the important information about their topics. So that topic information and resources, you're going to find the required readings that you need in there. So you'll either find a, a note about the textbook. If there's a textbook required, you might also find a link to a link that's actually called readings. Um, and that link will take you to um, a library page. So to our main campus library. Um, and and if your topic coordinator has uh, set up some required readings there for you, you'll find a link to all of those readings there. Um, so it's important to check out what the requirements are for each of your topics. Quite likely that they're going to be different across your topics. Um, and then you might find some similarities within the discipline. So within psychology, um, yes, we use a textbook at first year, but then that's pretty much it. For all the remainder years, you actually find that most of the time topic coordinators will um, allocate their required readings in PDF form through the library, through that readings link. Um, also worthwhile um, exploring textbook options. So if they say to you, yes, we have a textbook for this topic, here's the uh, reference which tells you, you know, usually what the textbook is, how to find it, that sort of thing. Um, but you also can usually find out uh, if there's an, an ebook version, which is sometimes cheaper than the hard copy version. Um, when I was studying, and even now as an academic, I often prefer both. I like to have my ebook version for when I'm doing, you know, on the bus or on public transport or doing, you know, bits and pieces that I can look at on my phone. But I also like to have the hard copy for when I'm um, really in a, a really strong study session um, with my head deep in a book kind of thing. So think about what's available to you. The other option, of course, is the library. So whenever you have a textbook that's a required reading or other readings as well, not just textbooks, but other readings, um, by and large, most of the time, the library will have some on reserve. And uh, there are different timelines of 
for those reserves. So sometimes you can loan uh, the readings for two hours at a time. Sometimes you can loan them for seven days at a time. So just worthwhile checking it out and seeing what's available for you in your topics. One of the really cool things that we launched just this year, um, earlier this year in semester one uh, for Flinders University students was uh, Compass. So Compass is a, um, a tailored version of our student website. So I kind of have to go back a step and first tell you about the student website. So here you see a screenshot on the side that is a flinders.edu homepage. And then you can see in blue there, we've kind of selected the student portal of that Flinders home webpage. The the student portal originally was created in partnership with students, so students came together uh, with um, uh, digital uh, developers and said, look, this is the stuff that we find really useful to have on our student page. So going and checking the student website uh, from our Flinders homepage, really, really useful. Then what um, Flinders in partnership with students did is they took it sort of that one step further and said, hang on, let's see if we can actually tailor the student website to each individual student. And that's exactly what Compass does. It's phenomenal. So if you go to the student website, just again, so from flinders.edu.au, click on that uh, top right hand corner where it says students, and then you'll see log into Compass, what's circled in red here. And you log into Compass just using your fan and uni password again, what you'll actually see is a tailored version of the student website that populates with all the information that's relevant just to you. So it actually shows you your timeline. What are the topics that you're currently enrolled in? What is the course that you're currently enrolled in? It can even um, show your GPA as well. And then along there, it also populates with our student services available to you. And I'm going to talk about student services in a minute. So um, student services, uh, a lot of what we do here at Flinders is not just prepare you for your degree or for your uh, postgraduate employment or postgraduate studies. Of course, that's what we do, but that's really the bare minimum of what we do. We very, very much care here at Flinders about you becoming successful, transitioning in a really beautiful, successful way so that you can achieve the goals that you want to achieve. And so one of the best ways to start off that journey is navigating to your finding your way at Flinders Flow site. So again, jump on to that Okta dashboard and then you can find uh, Flow and then in flow, you should see something that says finding your way at Flinders. And you can self-enroll in that uh, flow site. And it gives you access to a heap of different resources um, that help you kind of just get settled into what is this thing university life? What is, um, what's the go with a lot of the different events and um, ways of being at Flinders University? Um, so it offers you um, a lot of tips about Flinders University and about being a student and the kinds of resources that are available to you as a, a university student. So I'll just quickly show you this video that kind of helps to set the stage for those uh, student support services. Imagine you've turned up to uni for the first time. It can be a little daunting. Where do you go and who do you go to for help? Flinders University has a lot of services to help you on your journey. Sometimes uni will feel fun and easy. At other times, it can seem challenging. Flinders Connect is there to answer any questions and point you in the right direction. Flinders Connect can also assist you with enrolment, class registration, fees, scholarships, and general information. When it's time to study, there's the Library and Student Learning Support Service. Library staff can help you navigate the wealth of information across three Flinders Library branches. If you need help with Flinders Learning Online, the Library helps with that too. The Learning Lounge is available to help with academic writing, maths and statistics, referencing and English language support. You can also access Studiosity 24-7 for support with study and writing online. Everyone is welcome at FUSA, your student association. FUSA is home to the Student Council elected annually by students like yourself. It's their job to represent your rights and interests. They host lots of events on campus and are home to many clubs and societies for you to get involved in. FUSA also produces the student magazine Empire Times and offer free and confidential financial and academic advocacy. 
Flinders has more than 3,000 international students from over 80 different countries. International Student Services is the first point of contact for all onshore international students and offers a range of programs supporting your enrolment, study and social life. The Younger Endy Student Engagement Team provides support for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. This includes academic, pastoral, financial support and advocacy, scholarships, orientation, a culturally safe study space, social activities and more. Looking after your mental and physical health is important. At Health, Counselling and Disability Services, students can access confidential appointments with qualified doctors, nurses, experienced counsellors and disability advisors. Oasis is a student wellbeing centre focused on supporting the social, spiritual, physical and emotional needs of all students. Careers and employability connects you with industry, employers, career resources or advice and access to over 8,000 job opportunities each year. It also houses the Flinders Horizon Award Program, providing unique opportunities and experiences to complement your studies. Let's keep in touch. Each week during term time, we send a newsletter called Ping straight to your uni inbox. It's designed so you only see what's relevant to you. Let us know if you have any ideas or feedback to improve your experience at Flinders. The Student Ideas Gateway allows you to tell us how to help. To connect with any of the services mentioned, go to students.flinders.edu.au. Cool. So I'm hoping that it just gives you a really nice, really quite a lot of information in that one video. So um, definitely feel free to go ahead and watch that back again. It's obviously the link is available to you in the um, in these uh, lecture slides. Sorry. So the the key message here though is that pretty much regardless of anything that you're facing, um, there's help available to you. So. Like the video said, we offer a, a broad range of support services and probably some of the ones that I think I recommend to students the most frequently are the ones that students seem to need um, or rely on the most frequently as our free um, and confidential counselling services. So we offer um, mental health care uh, and mental health plans for students who are here and that works both in a face-to-face -face and telehealth um, format. So definitely worthwhile reaching out to them. Really common popular times are around uh, the beginning and um, at the end of semesters when assessments are all starting to, to roll in and be be due and so that can feel a little bit overwhelming so make sure that you check out those counseling services um, but then also those academic services so our um, student learning uh, support services are incredible we have a group of um, teaching specialists who really really care um, and other professional staff who really really care about your success um, academically and so they put together you know evidence-based um, resources, so how to write um, essays, how to write lab reports, how to synthesize information, how how do you know what evidence is good evidence. Um, so there's lots and lots of really worthwhile resources um, and in fact in psychology in our first year program we embed a lot of these resources right within our topic flow page so that we really encourage students to access them. So um, I encourage you guys to do the same. Um, with a lot of our uh, teaching and learning now, both in face-to-face -face and online, I think it's also really worthwhile for students to be knowledgeable about what is um, safety in an online environment or an etiquette. And so when you're thinking about Flinders University and etiquette, we have um, really clear expectations and guidelines around that and, and a policy as well. Um, so this is some really important information about what is cyber abuse, um, how to report that and gain support at Flinders if you ever find yourself in that situation. Um, so I think these resources are, are really important for you to be informed about what's acceptable behavior um, and then where to go for support if you're feeling uncomfortable at any time. Um, I hope uh, this is quite a lot of information, but and that's some of the things that we started learning about orientation in the past is that when we hit students with a lot of information at once, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And so instead, um, the um, 
they decided to essentially extend orientation. So rather than just having one week where we try and hit students with absolutely everything, we've actually taken it across four weeks. So this week marks um, a week and that ends on Friday, the 23rd of July. Next week is about connect week. And so connecting with each other, with um, people, um, whether that's online or face to face, um, it's really, really important. And in fact, our past students tell us that the number one most useful resource that they find on campus is each other. So reach out to other students. Um, that can be done, like I said, online. Some students do it on those discussion forums. Um, some people do uh, Facebook uh, groups. Um, a lot of disciplines have their own. We have Flinders Psychology Student Association in psychology, um, so FUPSA. Um, the other disciplines do as well. Um, they have uh, student associations and they often have Facebook sites. So getting to know each other, connecting with each other is really, really valuable and important to your experience and success here at Flinders University. And, you know, that helps with that whole collaborative peer process that you'll take with you into your degree or future studies. Um, then we have Skills Week, so thinking about those academic skills and supporting you through those, so that's the following week. And then finally, Wellbeing Week. We, again, care a lot about our students' well-being, and we have significant initiatives across campus, um, really, that are about um, tracking your well-being and uplifting and maintaining uh, that well-being. So check out all the resources um, on this flow page, see what you can book into and enjoy. Um, so there's lots of different events that are happening across those weeks. Um, obviously that Monday bingo bash probably won't happen um, because of our COVID restrictions at the moment, but um, just you know, watch this space, see what's going to be available to you, and definitely get out there and meet people. Um, so you can also uh, get onto our video library. So if you missed any of the events uh, that were happening yesterday or face-to-face, -face, um, we have a fantastic orientation video library where you can watch these resources, um, stay connected, stay informed, um, learn about what's available to you here on campus. So again, make sure that you check out that video library and, and um, maybe grab a snack and, and watch some of those uh, recordings. Finally, we have an O-Guide program. I absolutely love the O-Guide program. Um, this is a program that has current students who act as contact points for new students throughout the first few weeks of semester. So you can register to participate, you catch up with an O-Guide, and then they take you around campus and they show you all the wicked cool things, all the useful, helpful, um, great places to study, great places to grab food if you need something from the chemist or the post office, or what's useful in the library, or places that you can go that that maybe are more nooks and crannies that you might not have otherwise seen. Um, from what I hear from past uh, students who have gone on these uh, tours or O-Guide tours is that um, they find it really, really useful. So I think it's worthwhile checking out. So again, go to our students, uh, students.flinders.edu.au slash O-Guides and you can book in with one that's um, that fits for you and your timing. Look, I know that was a lot of information to take in. I hope you found it really, really useful. I've had an absolute pleasure welcoming you. Um, just remember to be kind to yourself. There's a lot going on transitioning into university regardless of your discipline, regardless of where you hope to end up, and regardless of where you're coming from. This is a whole new journey for you. So be kind, be self-compassionate, enjoy yourself, connect with others, and make the most of it. All right, take care.